It's April 10, 2016, and we want to know, is dirigible piloting the hottest growing job sector in Gotham City? Is Killer Moth's haunting origin story a vicious encounter with the Lunesta mascot? All this and more is coming up now. It's DCU Week 45 here at DCR. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny and usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Stress Citizens Radio. Everybody and welcome back to a, another episode of the DCR. I, th- I think we've done one or two of them now. A few. Yeah. Are we on six? Six or seven? Somewhere around there. <laughs> you count it on, one, on two hands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, of course, am your host, Sean Lamont, comic book reader extraordinaire. And we do not use that word lightly around here. Uh, but I am joined by my cohort in crime, the Pun Meister General, Mr. Brian Glein. Hello, sir. That is me. That is you. We, we have a present. Of, we have a uh, dichotomy here today because both of us are, took our notes and, and, and prep for the show when we were alive and awake mm-hmm, yes. and um, not having to pull all nighters for our respective jobs. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should be an interesting uh, um, attempt by both of our exhausted selves to do the excitement and, and, and funness that is within mm-hmm. my notes, at mm-hmm. least. I don't know about yours, but. Yeah. I, I have a lot of fun, happy, hey, let's be energetic, yay! And I'm like, oh, I've got two hours of sleep, I'm so tired. Yeah. Uh, so why don't Man, you tell where's, the, where's, that, where's that Lunesta moth when I need him? No kidding. Why don't you tell the lovely folks what we are going to do here today, though? We're going to be spoiling everything that happened in this past week's comics in DC's DCU line. Yeah, we're coming up on the end. We got uh, like six, seven more weeks of it to go. Okay. So uh, not too much. Uh, but... Fair warning to you all, we will be covering plot beats, storylines, character development, so if you do not want any of those things spoiled from this week's books, do not listen ahead. Fair warning! Isn't that how you do it? You just yell fair warning? Or do we just go, four? Is, is, is that our you new need spoiler? need like a fog <laughs> effect coming from the ceiling and a projection of uh, the guy from, uh, oh good, what, what was that show? Deadwood. Dressed as a pirate going, ah, Swearinger? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he, was, he, he was Blackbeard in one of the Pirates movies, so he's on the ride now. Oh, man. I, I had no idea. So but, you know, I'm black. <laughs> Mind you, j- just as lively and active as per- his performance in that movie. So, <laughs> Do you hey, just curse hey, a lot? <laughs> hey, you're, um, I can't curse. It's a Disney movie. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a pirate, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I've lost like a third of my vocabulary just by being here. <laughs> so I'm a Hayek, I guess. I don't know. Enjoy the ride, kids. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Davy Jones was better. Kids, you may remember me from Deadwood. <laughs> no, no, we don't. Uh, so let's not dilly dally about, and uh, let's set sail into Har. this week's books. All right, a vast ye Justice League colon Dark Side War special number one. Yeah, of, on of the broad vast. side, fire. Uh, uh, Okay, well, the pirate thing was just leading into the books. You okay, can, gotcha. You can abandon that motif now. <laughs> Gar. <laughs> All right. So um, this is... Backstory? Side it's, story? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's weird because they call it a special. Some stuff kind of happens, but not really. It, it seems like it it's feels filling like it, in the motivations for a lot yeah, of characters. Yeah, it could have just been... It felt like it could have just been another chapter in the Justice League Although book. there are at least three major plot developments in it as there well. There are, yes, yes. In this one, we get flashbacks learning about how a uh, Myrina Black, that very common name in the DC universe, <laughs> yes. uh, raised Grail, the daughter of Darkseid, to be good, despite the fact that she just loved killing people. When she was a baby, Omega beamed an entire army. Whenever her mom made a new boyfriend, murder. Skeevy <laughs> dude touched her as a teenager. Murdered everyone in the bizarre Lord of the Rings pub that they were in be- that somehow during modern times? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that seems to be a bit major point of contention for a lot of people because it's like, yeah, they were born 20 years ago, but uh, when they came to shore, there were a bunch of Roman centurions well, for um, cosplay reasons? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Grail was born the same day as Diana, you know, Wonder Woman, yet looks about 10 years younger, has like a teenager's haircut, and, well, other things. 
So anyway, so she almost murdered her mom uh, once after a bad dream. She's like, oh, man, I, I thought I was still, you know, like uh, had a test to take or something. <laughs> I had so no I was, pants on. Yeah, and no. I, I was going to Omega beam the classroom. So, so I, just, I was going to murder my mom, you know. Myrina did the most logical, sensible thing when your daughter tries to sleep murder you. Uh, she goes and gets a griffin to yeah. watch over her. Called in a favor. It's a, yeah. it's another nice little uh, yeah. uh, yeah, she, parallel she, because remember uh, Wonder Woman had that whole thing with the the uh, Minotaur. Yes, and everything. It's like uh, the Amazons have saved some of the, or at least spared some of these creatures. So that mm-hmm. it's like the hey, I'm going to call in this chip at some point to protect me from my murderous daughter. <laughs> Can you be my Chewbacca, there, Griffin? Okay. <laughs> scree, oh. scree, scree. <laughs> you know. So after the death of Darkseid, which completed their mission, so it's like, huh, why are we still in this book? I don't know. Uh, they still have to rein in anti-life energy. So Grail is doing some kind of um naked blood magic. As you do as a teenager. As you do, you know. Yeah. Painting ritualistic symbols on you in blood while you're naked. I believe that was sixth period when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine was fifth. Before, before lunch. Before oh. lunch. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, I tell man. You. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... She's doing some blood magic to Steve Trevor, who they've got chained up in the basement. No! <laughs> uh, she awkwardly makes out with him and turns him into some kind of energy monster. Is this a uh, Final Crisis type thing? Are they remaking Darkseid? Because she, like, pumped him full of, or anti-monitor or something? Like, the, the anti-life equation has to live somewhere, or that anti-energy, whatever it is, has to live somewhere. So they go, okay, you, Steve Trevor, you're going to be the big bad guy. Is this another Turpin thing? It might be. Yeah, okay. I don't know. All right. Might Because be. he was all glowy and had Omega things that were drawn on him and stuff, and I was like, ah, oh, I guess we're going to get a new one. Yeah. And maybe she just I wants to keep killing him. I over. didn't get to kill you, Dad, so I'm going to bring you back to life just so I can kill you again. <laughs> In my sleep. <laughs> Teenagers, give them an inch. All right. So finally, uh gets to... so. I love the fact that Steve Trevor finally gets to make out with an Amazon. She's evil and it's weird. It's like, oh, my God. I, For once, I'd like to make out with an Amazon without it being some sort of blood ritual. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, man, that motiva- that motivation board I made turned out all wrong. <laughs> Spilled some ketchup on it. I thought it wouldn't be anything. So, uh, yes. Also in this book, uh, Jessica Cruz, Power Ring is trapped inside of the power ring because Volthoom, the entity that controls the power ring, took control of her body. So she's stuck inside of this with the other former power rings that Volthoom killed. So the power ring is still the ring from the alternate universe Justice League. Earth They're 3. all bad guys. Yes. Okay, so it's the same one. I'm just making sure here. Yeah, yeah. So um Because I noticed he showed up inside the ring. Yeah, like inside the, original... the inside the ring, the Earth three, like Anti Hal Jordan that we've seen. Yeah, mega Green Lantern. Yeah, mega <laughs> Green Lantern. Yeah, good. Well, I will use that. So she's not dead yet. So she still has the ability to fight her way out of the ring, um, because the voice of the ring's battery is going to tell her how to break out. But a uh, mega Green Lantern says that's like, hey, you should just be super scared and afraid of everything, and hang out here with us, where we're all just gonna play it safe and hide from things. <laughs> because if you're not here. Volthoom is in here doing unimaginable things to us, so I would rather you keep it that way. Let's just stay here in our particular area. We can make some blanket forts, maybe. I don't know, something like that. Uh, we get Netflix in mm-hmm. here. I yeah. mean, we're really sad yeah. if you think about it. It's evil Netflix, but you know. <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah. Stilt man, why is Netflix original doing Stilt man? Yeah, why can't they do this? Daredevil? <laughs> There's so many Ashton Kutcher programs. <laughs> I thought there was only supposed to be one. There's like there's they're all Ashton Kutcher, and then there's one that isn't. That's what is this? <laughs> she prefer she perseveres on to save her Justice League friends and finds the power battery, but it's Cyborg. I guess he got trapped in the ring when Grid took to, took over his body, which is a thing that happened oh, they were a both couple together. Yeah, which okay. happened a couple months ago. I guess I don't know. There's been so many delays in this book. I have a hard time remembering what happened. I think it's less delays and more side stories. Maybe kind of thing. that could possibly like be they, it. They tangent. It feels like it's been going on. This is like approaching f- like a three months now, two and a half months. No, the entire Dark Side War thing. Oh, there's okay. been a lot the, of issues. It's been going back. on gotcha. a while. Yeah, yeah, we're on part eight. I want to say. You know, I, I think eight was like a month or two ago. Yeah, I think it's lo- longer than that with all the side stuff. It's reaching uh, 
on whatever that that Trinity of Sin thing was that I hated <laughs> oh. length. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's my my son entered like an art contest at the comic shop, and he got to pick a free trade out of the out of their you know half price trade box or whatever. And as I'm going through trying to find stuff that was kid friendly, I saw that I saw the trade for that in there. I'm just like, oh, gee, why would someone want to turn this one in? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> so um, anyway, yeah. So cyborgs there. He's gonna help her get out. He's got his Detroit shirt on and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So that was an extra chapter in Dark Side War. I th- I thought it would lay there, down there, a lot of good ground. There was there was cool stuff in there. At the same time, just like oh, this was. It okay. felt like they were building Myrina and Grail as great uh, uh, antagonists for Wonder Woman in the future. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's already the seeds already been planted for yeah. that, but it seems like they're giving more backstory. She's more, her venom or whatever. Yeah, or whatever that would be. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the murdering of cosplayers all the time. It was a dark, dark day in the, the reenactment field in yes. Italy there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when an entire battalion of uh, centurions were murdered. Yes. Ugh, dark day. And dark then a griffin day. flew by yeah. for no reason. <laughs> That's a weird sounding griffin. <laughs> Clear your throat, griffin. <laughs> I, I liked it. I thought it was fun just for the character stuff myself because, uh, A, we're getting more Jessica Cruz in the front. Which, which I like. Uh, she's Steve, going to be Steve Trevor being awkward around Amazon. Okay, yes, yeah, Steve Trevor got the short end of the stick again. That's as what makes per me, usual, but that's what makes me love him <laughs> in my own special way. And and we're gonna get a little bit more of a a reason for for Jessica to hang out with Cyborg and stuff, and maybe start building up some more relationships mm-hmm. outside of the ring people and and get her more involved. Yes, she's co-headlining a book in Rebirth, so I'm, okay, I'm hoping gotcha. they, need, they need to build. Her she up seemed a like she was bit. like. It's like it was like, hey, she's important, and then it's like, okay, she's not. We yeah. all remember that classic scene where she's like, I need a Green Lantern to train me really bad, and Hal Jordan's just like, okay, well, I think the very best person that could train you with this uh, evil Green Lantern entity is uh, uh, the Flash. Smell you later. Off to space. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Space people! <laughs> and Flash is just like, well, I'm very affable, so I'll try, I guess. <laughs> the old Central City try. No, one of the Rebirth books is is Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. Oh, so. yeah, that was that was alluded to at the end of uh, Jeff Johns' uh, Big Green Lantern run, wasn't yep. it? Yeah, so it'll be a, a big postscript. Ta-da! Hey, you know those characters that we introduced uh, with much fanfare and to-do? And Three years just- later, we're finally getting to it. <laughs> we got to it, guys. In we two more years, it. we'll have that Plastic Man book that we started in a Forever Evil. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on. Justice League, good. Big, widescreen. A lot of stuff going on. This was just a little bit more of a background filler thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, new Suicide Squad. Movie property. Let's let's move it up towards the front a little bit. Yeah. And it's the second half of the the uh, Seely Fist of Cain storyline, shall we say, <laughs> where Harley Quinn set up a breakout for the Suicide Squad to get out from underneath the thumb of Amanda Waller because... You know, she had those bombs in their in their necks, and she was threatening to blow them up every time they didn't do what she said. And that was no way to live as a villain. So they she arranged this whole thing for the the coffee magnate, the Buddy Holly, whatever, the Buddy Coffee magnate, whatever guy. Okay, whatever. Uh, he was gonna break them out, and he does, and he takes them back to Castle Wolfenstein or whatever it's called off in Germany. And it turns out, whoops. Not really a good guy. He's actually the leader of the Fist of Cain, who are a... How did Fist of Cain? Jeez, how do I describe them? They're a bunch of point murderers. They believe that... They the, want points. Yes, they believe humankind should be called. It's already too many people out there. So they have assigned points to people, and whoever gets the most points by killing said people, well, they get to... Be the better fist of Cain. Is there at least like a Kool-Aid point system where you can get a fanny pack if you get enough points? You know what? I'm so happy you brought this up because <sighs> it is so hard as a Fist of Cain member to keep track of all of your murders. Like, how many points do I actually have? How much are these people actually worth? Well, luckily, Brian, there's an app for that. Because yes. you can go to www.fistofcain.org and it has all of the points for everyone. Well, you can't do it because, admittedly, as soon as I read that, I went, typey, 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 and it came back nothing. I went, huh, that would have been actually kind of a cool little tie. <laughs> uh, at least at least Clark Atropolis sent you to DC Superman page. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, I forgot about Clark Atropolis. 
I, I get sad every time. Memories. I get sad whenever old Cat Grant shows up on Supergirl. <laughs> <laughs> well, it not only does this give you your points, it gives you the points of everyone you're going to go after oh. and updates those totals in real time. Mm. <laughs> Can you buy Defauster Kane bucks to get more points in I advance? I would assume so. That's what it is. Like, you can uh, use them to enter raffles. I, I, I could grind all night, or I could just pay some for some for some Defauster Kane bucks. Exactly. It's it's the in, in-game in credits. You have to... Defauster Kane is freemium, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Apparently. Uh, so, as Harley Quinn is freaking the bejeebus out of Diablo, where he actually helps her out, and she's like, I'm going to pop your eyes out and replace it with gumdrops. Ha ha ha, just kidding. And he's like, yeah, I'm on the wrong side of all of this. <laughs> uh, Deadshot finds himself making best friends with one of the mercenaries that the DeFaster Kane people hired to break them out and now are also on the, the run from these murder people. And that is Death Trap, the, the British guy that comes out and shoots people and like idolized Deadshot. The reason why they are best friends is because Death Trap's power is is he can make a gun out of anything instantly. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and he makes like a a bathroom tile pistol and and Deadshot just looks at him like I'm taking you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after the two of them there's a guy with these similar powers that that was in the old I wonder I wonder if it's I know it's not the same name but it's the same exact powers as the guy from the old continuity. Oh really? And when Grant Morrison famously told everyone to just sort of do whatever they do, certain things in uh, the, uh, the lead up to final. The, no, in the uh, Justice League one one million, gotcha, the one million gotcha. stories. He told a uh, hitman writer uh, Garth Ennis, eh, "Just do whatever the heck you want." And so uh, the gunshot or whatever guy's name is uh, from the one million area accidentally grabbed his butt and uh, blew his butt up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I yeah. guess he ran with that. Do whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Um, so let's see what's going on here. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, the two of them, Death Trap and Deadshot, are able to fight their way through. And after a brief moment of weighing their options, decide to actually save Cheetah. Because they're like, you know, if they kill off more of us, they'll start fighting each other. And we could just kind of hang back over here and let everyone murder each other. And then just pop out and be like, guns blazing. Yeah. Uh, but they decide, eh, we better save her. So they save her and end up linking up back with Harley Quinn and Diablo. Who Harley Quinn's kind of like, ha, ah, sorry guys, my bad. I, I was trying to get us out from the whole neck bomb thing. He, he, <laughs> he, he. Uh, so, uh, what are we gonna do, guys? What are we gonna do? There's like a thousand crazy murder people out there, and Deadshot goes, has this little, like, uh, inspirational speech moment. He goes, that's right. There are a thousand murderers out there, but we have something that they don't have. A common unwillingness to die before we murder Amanda Waller. <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, yeah, we're going to murder Amanda Waller. <laughs> uh, speaking of Amanda Waller, she is having some issues of her own, though, back at uh, Bell Rev Prison. Uh, because remember that Ashmore guy that turned out to be a bad guy and we thought he was working for the Fist of Cain? Uh, he's not. He is actually the Hunky Punk. <laughs> <laughs> The great British gargoyle theme villain that we all are just so fearful of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she kicks the crap out of him and then goes, Hey, listen up. I'm going to turn you over to the Brits unless you help me bust out my team from the, from Castle Wolfenstein over there. You're a gargoyle theme thing. You should like castles. Come on. Let's go do it. <laughs> and he goes, Fine. I don't really have a choice. And they both head on down to the jail where they wake up Captain Boomerang and go, Hey, you want to make Deadshot really hate you? Let's go make him owe you his life. <laughs> He's like, oh, oi, oi, that sounds awesome. And they oh, go. Hey, oh, hey. <laughs> and they, uh, so the team of Amanda Waller, Hunky Punk, and Captain Boomerang are going to be the cavalry for this, uh, this, uh, adventure that they are on. I should read your copies of these. <laughs> sounds amazing. It, it's fun. It's very fun. Um, Amanda Waller comes off as, as, as an excre- extreme, extreme, uh, hard ass, which I assume is the Amanda Waller that we all know. Uh, I know her from the the cartoons more than the books, yeah. and and that was her role there as well. Where it was like, "Geez, lady, get off Batman's cape! Just let him be <laughs> for a little bit." <laughs> uh, so next up, I figured right. tie in, tie down, tie in. Yes. All right. Well, actually, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to turn this chair around backwards so okay. I can sit in it casually. Okay. 
I'm, I'm going to do some straight talk with uh, uh, oh. you, you hot topic teens out there. Okay, hey, hey, go for it. Hey, guys, I, I want to be cool with you. What are the things that you like? Uh, well, we like things that are um, extremely serious and violent and bloody. Um, but we also uh, like things to be like super cute and happy. <laughs> okay, well, have I got the book for you, Hot Topic <laughs> Teens. I've got Harley Quinn and Suicide Squad April Fool's Day special. The April Fool's is that the Suicide Squad's only on one page. <laughs> so, Harley Quinn is looking for a new lease on life, and she gets an anonymous letter that she should be a psychiatrist for Evil Anonymous. She's an evil psychiatrist, so this makes perfect sense. It does. It so, does. Finally, her references come into play. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, this is like when she, they did the evil anonymous did the background check on her. It's like, oh, wait, this, this, this makes perfect, perfect sense. Match. Yeah. <laughs> Who else understands supervillains better than her? So the, she decides, you know what? I'm not going to go and do an interview or anything. I'm going to go show that I've got the experience to do this, and I'm going to go and save Man Bat. <laughs> So she hops on his back as he just randomly like flies through Gotham. Uh, he careens around. She's like, no, I'm helping you. And she's like grabbing his ears and he's like veering all over the place. I'm helping. I'm helping. <laughs> and uh, he cracks his skull on like a fire, like a fire truck or a yeah. bus or something. Yep. Uh, crashes to the ground. And as the blood pools around his head, uh, she turns back. At, he turns back into a person. She's like, I cured him. I'm the <laughs> best psychiatrist <laughs> ever. Bleed, bleed, bleed. <laughs> Scream. Yep. <laughs> And as, and as, um, now she also hit her head when she crashed into the ground, yes. riding on the back of a humanoid bat creature. As um, we do. So suddenly we get a patented, uh, guest artist dream sequence as we, as we, uh, shift from the very serious Jim Lee artwork into a Sean Cheeks Galloway drawing the cutest, cutesiest version of his, like, art style I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, if you want a reference, if you're not looking at this, um, he was the same guy w- that was the art director for uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon. Oh, okay, gotcha. Or maybe not art director, visual. He did the visual design for okay. it. Okay. Anything. So you, that, it looks, it looks like an even cutesier, like, chibier version of that. <laughs> uh, also, as a side note, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man is the best version of Spider-Man That's in other Neil media. the Neil Patrick Harris one? I don't know if it's Neil Patrick Harris. It's the one where there was actually, like, continuity and they were teenagers and Gwen Stacy was there. And all right. There's a lot of relationship stuff. It. It was very did good. Did J. Jonah Jameson yell about a menace all the time? I better believe he did. <laughs> Try to sell us insurance. And <laughs> they did like a whole episode like based around like a Midsummer Night's Dream produ- production at their high school, and it was brilliant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll take too, your word for it. Gone too soon. I that one. Uh, if you watch it and then watch Ultimate Spider-Man, it, you get really sad. Oh, I, get I really, really Ultimate sad. Spider-Man. I, I like MTV Spider-Man. <laughs> well, not... Um, well, no, I'm talking the current Ultimate Spider-Man, oh, gotcha, not, gotcha. not MTV Spider-Man. Okay, yeah. that All was right. the Neil Patrick Harris. One. That was the Neil Patrick Harris one. Uh, video game Spider-Man is what I would call that one. <laughs> Neon video game Spider-Man. Touche. Anyway, back to Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn decides to uh, head shrink a bunch of super obscure evil anonymous members, like Ratcatcher. Yep. Flippin' Ratcatcher shows up. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Toy Man, Enchantress, random guy with a starro on his face, who <laughs> has to be like a running joke in the DC office at some point. It's like, we made it look like he's going to be really important and nothing ever happened with him. So now it's just like, put the guy, random guy with the starro on his face in this if we need an extra villain. We, maybe someone will pick it up eventually. We'll get to that thread after we get done with that plastic man issue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Most importantly, though, is Air gun killer moth. Oh, poor killer moth. Who is talking about his ridiculously traumatic past encounters with moths while occasionally like batting at a lamp because, you know, <laughs> ooh, the light. And Harley just ignores him. Like she's just like bl- like blissfully ignorant of like his like actual pain and torture and potentially interesting backstory that we're not getting anything <laughs> <No>. out of. <laughs> Uh, then Poison Ivy shows up and they steal some fear toxin and Harley tries to use all the even non people as her villain team. But then she has to fight the Justice League and it gets super serious in Jim Lee again. Uh, And they beat the crap out of Harley Quinn. And she's like, why would you beat up sweet, innocent, evil, trying to take over the world psychiatrist Harley Quinn? Well, to be fair, she was like, I was just trying to help like I did Mad Bat over there. (laughs) You're the real bad guys, Justice League. And it turns out she was just uh, kidnapped by a much more uh, wall-like 
Amanda Waller. Yes, a little bit. Much more classic. Uh, and was being brainwashed into joining the Suicide Squad. They show up in the last page of this one pay- one-shot Suicide Squad special. You went, oi, 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 I'm Captain Boomerang. I'm oi, Captain oi. Boomerang. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, uh, I think Killer Croc was there. Yep, yep. A, a red dead shot. Yep. You know, so, so red dead drug. shot? <laughs> red dead shot revolver. Uh, he does have a lot of revolvers. <clears throat> was that the... Was that the uh, no, that no red red one is classic. That's what I blue, thought. Blue one is is Will okay, Smith. Okay, that's what I thought. I was so, like, maybe I just misheard last time when you were going over that one, and and Will Smith maybe changed into the red he's one. Like, at the I end. don't like red. I'm all about the blue. It's well, like, they're just gonna keep him in the full costume, so you can yeah, just you can put whoever it. you want in there at yeah. this point. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's the easy way to do it. Are you upset with casting choices, Internet? Here's a, here's a happy but medium for you. It's Will Smith. And he's he's legitimate. Yeah, pardon me. Legitimately taken over the role within the books. We we've seen it with our own eyes. Yes, he has taken over the role of mm-hmm. Deadshot. That yeah, cunning Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a double shot. Okay. Well, well let me. And, ask and, you, and, let and me this, ask. this is written by Rob Williams. It was actually a lot of fun. I'm, yeah, it's the same I mean, guy that I'm, does Martian Manhunter. That, yeah. that we've been I'm, crowing over I'm, for. I'm, I'm being a goofball about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you actually read it. And you smiled and laughed on more yeah. than one occasion mm-hmm. and enjoyed it, which this has nothing to do with the quality of the cur- current Harley Quinn titles. They're just not aimed at you whatsoever. Yeah. And you fully admitted that. So I was like, huh, Brian's reading a Harley Quinn book and enjoying himself. Hmm. Weird. April Fool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let's go into my double shot of the big players. I got Superman number 51 followed by Detective Comics 51. So... Let us start off with Superman. So, Brian, yeah. I'm Superman. I'm dying. Okay. Uh, now, I'm no doctor. Mm-hmm. I'm no medical professional here. But apparently, falling into an apocalyptic fire pit and turning into a shadowy nega version of myself, uh, combined with irradiating the bejeebus out of my body with the one substance that's lethally toxic to me, mm-hmm. and then topping that off with my own god coming down and punching me through the moon. Yeah. Very bad for my health. Huh. Very bad. Hmm. I thought it was a good cardio thing. No. No, none of those things were good. So uh, I am straight up dying. I do not have much to live on this earth. More pissed off than afraid. Uh, pissed off being... I'm having time stolen from me that I could be using to help people. Um, kind of unfair. Not really digging it. Kind of feels like there's some sort of rebirth event coming and maybe someone else will be donning the mantle of Superman and I knew 52 Superman and being shuffled off the stage like I'm being shuffled off this mortal coil. But them's the breaks. So what can I do? <sighs> well, I've looked around the uh, Fortress of Solitude here. Did finish the internal decorations. He built another, you know how he has the statue of his parents from Krypton holding up the planet, like both of them, one hand mm-hmm. holding up Krypton over the door. He built one of Mon Pa Kent on the other side of the room holding up the planet Earth, and it's just him sitting in the middle of both, like, his parents from Krypton and his parents from Bane Earth. Bane is very confused by this. <laughs> very much so, but it's, it's, it's a very simple thing that does quite a lot for him. And I was like, why has no one done that before? That's a very easy thing. Uh, to really say the crux of who he is without having to do much at all. And, mm-hmm. and it works very well. I liked it quite a bit. I'm just tossing it out there. So he's got his space zoo. Mm-hmm. He's got a bunch of robots running around. And then he's just got statues of his parents holding up the two planets that he is a son of. And it's like, oh, this poor guy. And he's sad because he's dying, dying horribly. Yes, I could go tell my best friend, Lana Lang. And he goes flying off. But on the way, I'm going to quickly save some kids from a fire, stop a robby, robbery, catch an airplane, save a construction worker who was falling, punch a giant robot, and then laser blast some meteors that were going to hit the planet. Whew, okay, made it to Smallville. <laughs> it's a, just a two-page splash of him, like, his normal day. Well, he's commuting over to Smallville to see Lana Lang, and he shows up, he's like, Hey, Lana, um, so I'm dying. And she freaks out and goes, what? No, that's crap. He's like, yeah, afraid so. I wanted to tell my oldest and best friend first, and that's you, Lana Lang. Uh, but I did also want to ask a favor. When I do die, can you bury me next to my parents here? And she's like, no, that's morbid. Why are we having this conversation? She's like, 
trust me, you're the only person I can trust to do it. I just really want to make sure that happens. And uh, she starts crying. He's like, hey, it's okay. And she goes, no, no, Superman. No, it's not okay. Not at all. It's like, oh, okay, well, after that uh, punch in the gut, what can I do now? Well, I guess I'll go visit Lana Lang, my my co-work buddy, and uh, see how she's doing because I have a favor to ask her. And he's like, hey, Lois Lane, um, you want to do that whole can you read my mind flying sequence thing? I heard you were a big fan of it. <laughs> she's like, yeah, let's go do that. And they're flying around. She's like, so what can I do for you? And uh, Superman goes, well... You want to pay me back for that whole releasing my secret identity? Uh, you can do me a solid. I want you to be the person that writes the story about both Clark Kent and Superman. Uh, for no reason, really. Just thought mm-hmm. you'd be a good person to tell that story, huh? Uh, can yes. you read my mind? As they're flying away. And it's uh, like, uh, mm. well, happy. Happy. It's actually very touching. It's very nice. I like it. In the background, uh, some parolee in Kansas gets hit with the spirit of Superman. That's the only thing. It's a little glowy thing that runs into his truck, and uh, he turns into a all-red, fiery Superman. While over in China, someone has used the backdoor entrance of the computer from when the Watchtower, the Fortress of Solitude, and the Eye of the Storm were all puzzled together. And has found a way to hack into the Fortress of Solitude using some leftover code that was still there from that puzzling and steal some data and downloads it into a a blue Superman that's inside of a test tube somewhere in China. Mm. Mm. Just throw that out there. Ha. Ha ha. So Man, with that information of all these Ooh. things that I've brought up that have touched all the other books that have happened in the Superman universe, who do you think's writing this one? Is it Tomasi? It's Tomasi. Mm-hmm. Everything counts, man. Yeah. Everything counts. It's actually a, a a sneak peek. It's Tomasi and Janin doing this oh. book, and it's oh, really man. freaking good. Jeez. It's really freaking good. I'm just I'm just saying it's uh and there's a lot of hyperbole. The internet is known for hyperbole, but there's a lot. Really? Of people, I know. <laughs> I know. But there are more than like. A handful of people saying this is one of the best Superman issues they've read since the New 52 launched. And it's kind of sad that it's basically the end of this character that it, it seems like are that's they, the direction. Are, are they, they going to Ben Riley New 52 it, Superman? That's the question is oh. which Superman's going to come out on the other end oh, of that, Rebirth? That, that's, some, that's a tricky road to travel. Yeah. That's a very yeah. tricky road to travel. So. Hey, new readers. <laughs> guess what? Forget you. <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna say something else. <laughs> what? Just like the hit song "Forget You" by CeeLo Green. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it is. It's. It's really, really good. Another. Another. Other voices in Reddit stuff like that are saying this is kind of the new Fifty Two version of All Star Superman being mm-hmm. written by Tomasi instead, with people like Janin and Zercher on art. So, hey, hey. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do that, I know it's like that's good team. What's, what, what's the one thing they didn't cover in All Star Superman? Superman Red and Superman Blue. Even though it's probably in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> Frank Whiteley snuck something in there. I'm sure. Just a red and blue smudge. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to Detective Comics 51, where another man whose hearing days are coming to an end, and that's ex Commissioner Jim Gordon. Because as we know, Bruce Wayne has regained his memory. So there's not enough room in Gotham City for a robot Batman and a regular Batman. He's going to have to find a new job. Yeah. And he's not commissioner anymore. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? I don't know. But right now, it's at the very tail end of his whole run as Jim Bats. And he runs across one of his old Marine squad mates who runs up and warns him, Jim, you don't understand. Our past has caught up to you, to us. Remember that horrible thing that happened when we were serving in the desert? It's come back. It's come back. And that's when some crazed knife wielding maniac runs up screaming about Amun set and, uh, slits his friend's throat and then starts waving the knife around at Jim and Jim ends up knocking him down. But then he commits suicide by breaking a hollow tooth with poison in it and Jim's just standing there with his groceries like I goddamn hate this city I hate <laughs> Gotham City <laughs> so he goes fine fine okay let's get this together it's time for the ex-commissioner to head out one last time before he becomes an ex-Batman 
by finding his old squad he was an ex-sergeant in and finding out what's going on. It's very much a Jim Gordon has lost. He's an ex-everything right now. Like, mm. And even when he goes to the store, the clerk's like, hey, commission. He's like, ex commission. I'm not the commissioner anymore. And then he goes to the army base, and they're like, hey, Sarge. He's like, ex-Sarge, not a sergeant anymore. <laughs> and it's, it's just him. Uh, he All of these things have made him who he is, but he is none of them at the same time. And it's like, oh, poor guy. He is Ronin now. Man without a country. I guess he has a country, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so he heads on over to Afghanistan, where he finds half of his original squad have mysteriously disappeared, and the CO has been covering up for it. The commanding officer has been covering up for it, and they're like, huh, well, that's weird. So he tails the CO into, into town and finds that he's having a meeting with these cultists, and it turns out that the commanding officer was told, if you don't hand over all the people that screwed us over years ago... We're going to attack your base and bury it in sand and kill all the soldiers on it. And so the commanding officer is like, well, I guess uh, they're all retired or, or not really in the military anymore anyway. So it's not really my business on what you do in the first place. So Jim gets all mad and beats him up before getting a Jeep and driving off into the desert back to that original place where that incident took place way back in the past. But then he gets hit by a sandstorm and uh, takes cover under the overturned Jeep as it's buried in sand. And he spends the next couple hours trying to dig himself out. But he goes, you know what would make this a lot quicker? A robot Batman suit. So he goes, uh, boop, 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 boop. Hey, Bat Dirigible. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, uh, can you guys drop me off the Bat Robot suit? And they go, yeah, sure, I guess, you know, for old time's sake. Uh, where do you want us to drop it off? And he's like, F. Afghanistan! <laughs> they're like, you are aware how dirigibles work. It right? will be a long time before we get over there. And he's like, can't you just shoot it off in like a rocket or a missile of some sort and have it land here? What about the guy Sid that works in the mechanics area? He should, he should, he should make it faster, right? <laughs> he's always smoking that cigarette and then uh, lighting the dynamite off of it all the time. It's very dangerous, yes. but got to admit, a lot of panache, a lot of style mm-hmm. in that guy. Uh, so they go, well, first off, why are you in Afghanistan? You were just here yesterday. This seems like a very rapid chain of events has occurred. He goes, well, it all started back when I was in the Corps. Uh, backstory, backstory, backstory that we're going to leave some cliffhanger on. Uh, when me and my squad found this temp- temple to Amonset, who were um, basically a bunch of sadistic horrible people then we walked into the room where they were literally crucifying bloodletting and flaying the skin off of people and the record scratched and went and they all turned and looked at us and that's where we leave off with this one with the uh the marines walking into a a bar that they're not supposed to be (laughs) it's uh it's gritty it's gritty it's a lot more detective style and uh again uh tomasi Writing this one huh. as well, so it's it's a, uh, I guess they kind of handed over the reins in the pre-birth stuff, as that's what I'm calling this month or two before rebirth, the pre-birth, and uh, they're they're letting him kind of set up the status quo, it seems, for a couple hmm. of places, and it's it's very interesting. I like it a lot. It, this is the same book that had the the mask killer guy that was three issues of a mystery where it was them trying to solve it and doing all these things and triangulating and enhancing things and yeah. And it was it was a very good read, and now we're getting it with more of a a uh, a jag style procedural where he's he's off in the military setting now and doing it. It's like yeah, I kind of like this. Is that the one with the hot topic girl in? No, that's NCIS. Yeah, yeah. This is, jag yeah. was the the Navy Marine. This writer is going to shoehorn my personal preferences into this show. <laughs> I'm stuck working on CBS. I'm going to put her in here. But it's really solid. I liked it quite a bit. I like what they're doing, and uh, I I hope it continues to be a a detective style thing. But as we know in Rebirth, it's going to be the let's make these characters less worthless book. So we'll see how that works as well. That that cashier at the grocery store is still just very very not not self aware. Who's that? I'm sorry. The, the cashier at the grocery store constantly oh, uh, calling him commissioner. Oh yes, yes. And and the thing is, Michael Chiklis shops at that very same grocery oh. store. Does the same exact thing to him too. <laughs> totally not on the ball. That's all it is: is a bunch of commissioners or ex commissioners <laughs> walking. <laughs> <out. laughs> How many I'm times the, I have to tell you? I'm the commissioner of the MLB, and they're like, "Good enough, come on, ex commissioner." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The very specific grocery store. <laughs> 
<laughs> Commissioner's best butter. Just That's why you should just go shop at the Anubis Market, uh, Jim. Boo. Boo. So that's it. That's the first half of our show. All right. We wandered off course quite, quite a, a bit. bit. Quite a bit. Quite so a bit. What do you have to get us back on course for the second half? Well, nothing's going to put us back on course quite like Green Arrow number 51, <laughs> uh, Batman Beyond number 11, Batgirl number 50. And I have Green Lantern number 51, uh, Midnight or Lump number 11, where we learned that you actually can solve all your problems with punching. Mm-hmm. And uh, last but not least, Swamp Thing number 4, where a legend of the 80s may draw his last breath. So hold on just a couple seconds. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will go through those books. <laughs> That wasn't very motivational at all. You need a better motivation board like Steve Trevor. (laughs) I suppose. (laughs) Uh, So we are back, and we're going to do some more books. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Woo. I got my energy back. No, well, no, I'm trying, but (laughs) Uh, go for it, Brian. Why are you leaning off the halfway? Green Arrow number 51. Oh, oh, uh, Lupinex? Lupinex, Lupinex, (laughs) celebrate the day. All right. right. Green Arrow is in Nigeria looking for Dr. Miracle, the man with the magic blood that can cure the leukose disease, along with Emiko and George the Wolf. Also, he's a werewolf now. Also, he's a werewolf now. <laughs> I just thought that was a plot point that maybe if people are just tuning in, they yeah, should understand. They, should <laughs> they get captured by a local warlord named Oga, yet another villain of color that paints himself white in this series of Green Arrow stories uh he get he even calls his gang the whites because he's going to op- appropriate our culture by raping and pillaging the countryside and oh, what have you have man you. yeah so oga is oga is ba- if you we need a visual for oga oga is basically terry cruz in an early 2000s fairly brothers movie fat suit okay gotcha yep, yep. Green Arrow wolfs out and starts surfing on top of their jeeps with giant cow skulls on them, and a fight breaks out. Uh, George the Wolf bites a lady's arm so bad it goes zigzag. Ah. <laughs> but Oga brings in Dr. Miracle. It's like, hey, look at that. First place we went. He just happened to be there. That's very convenient. Well, that was their plan. They were going to have George the Wolf just maim everyone until they brought out the magic blood that fixes things. Yes. So... uh he brings out Dr. Miracle, takes his big old, you know, machete, um, say, hey, stick out your tongue. I want to show you a cool trick. Slice ah. down the center of your tongue. Now make out with this lady with the zigzag arm. Ah. And Steve Trevor's just like, my God, it, it just keeps happening. <laughs> and uh, so his miracle blood is so powerful, it heals her shattered zigzag arm. And uh, she's bad, all better. And Dr. Miracle is like, hey, everyone, just so you know, I can only heal the living. This will be very important later. Okay, gotcha. Just so as you know. <laughs> I feel like this is setting something up. <laughs> is this all just a con? Is this like a, a college prank YouTube channel thing <laughs> where he actually doesn't have Healy blood, but he just makes out with hot chicks it's, all it's, the it's time? All, it's all just video <laughs> editing, yeah. Like, this is actually my college film I'm funding. I just want to make out with hot ladies. <laughs> uh, later on, I'm gonna try get, get me and my buddy. We're gonna try to get our girlfriends to make out. It's it's all for art. Oh, it's all for, for art. art. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then zombies are gonna show up because it's a college film, you know. Uh, so they found a they found Doctor Miracle very quickly. But you know who else was looking for him? Deathstroke. Uh oh. So we wait. Get, Deathstroke was looking for Mister Miracle. Or, he was I'm looking sorry, for Doctor Miracle. Miracle. He was okay. looking for Doctor Miracle. Yes. Uh. So um. We get Paige. After page, after page of Deathstroke just murdering the whites. <laughs> murder after murder after 
<laughs> bullet shell, bullet shell, knife, knife, is, is, bullet shell. Is Dr. Miracle just standing in the middle like, nope, can't fix that. <laughs> yeah. Nope, can't fix that. <laughs> Guys, this is low budget. We got to keep this a little yeah. lower on the uh, college fund here. He kills Oga. That would explain the Oga fat suit. Uh, <laughs> he kills Oga and then starts fighting Team Arrow, easily dispatches them, and then stabs Ali in the heart with a buck knife and whoop, whoop, whoops off with Dr. Miracle. So uh, werewolves are immune to that, aren't they? Was it a silver knife? I don't know. I'm pretty sure you have to... It was to, covered like... with the blood of all of his enemies, so I couldn't quite tell. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I'm pretty sure werewolves are immune to just buck knives. Okay. I, I think they there's something else you have to do with them. Uh, I think you have to drink from a rain puddle from the footstep of a werewolf or something. Oh, wow, that's very specific. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's... I think that's how it works. Maybe that's where Lufinex comes from. Oh, man. <laughs> Celebrate the day. Uh, yeah. Well, that <laughs> this book is bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> that turned rather quickly. I mean, I was curious with the whole Green Arrow is a werewolf thing. But like, well, I'm writing a Green just... Arrow story. There's social commentary. Um, le- le- left left leaning. Yes. Um, werewolf murders. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's what everyone it's looks for. A Green Arrow. <laughs> I just, I, I'm very, very curious if uh, Deathstroke's being used like he was used before. Whenever they did the uh, the the DCU relaunch stuff, I, th- I don't think it was DCU. What was the one right before DCU where they had the uh, like a relaunch, kind of a mini relaunch after? Uh, Fear- what? I don't remember about? what it was. They were calling Not it Flashpoint. No, it was it was Flashpoint. Then there was another one, and then there was uh, Convergence, and then Zero Year or okay. not Zero, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so not quite the new Fifty Two, but right after the new Fifty Two. Yeah, it was like they they gave a good they jump sure on like, point. There, for there's everything. like okay, slightly less cross hatching and stab and uh, losing your arms. But it, here's a re- <laughs> here's a here's our minor reboot. But it but it was a bunch of uh, Deathstroke showing up and just clearing the board of whatever storyline was going on at the time. He would just show up and murder all the supporting characters and stuff, and they'd be like. All right, I'm off to the next book to wipe the board clean for them. That's <laughs> oh, Beast Boy's all the way over there. Eh, he can survive. He's he's like the uh, the uh, Sandman. God, what was Sims that book? Hook. What was that book even called? The Ra- oh, the Ravagers. There yeah, Ravagers. Go. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the ones he did. He just yeah. showed up and stabbed everyone. He <laughs> yep. was like, "Well, off to the next one, guys. See you later." And then he went to his own book and stabbed a thousand ninjas. And he was like, "Well, cleared that storyline up. Off to the next one." <laughs> yeah. Went over to Wonder Woman, stabbed a bunch of people, and it was like, okay, Deathstroke, I get it. If that's your job, if you're the cleanup crew of all these storylines, that's cool. I can yeah. I can get behind that. It's just, you know, maybe less stabby. Maybe you yeah, can talk but- to these people first and be like, hey, guys, your book coming to an end. Storyline's got to close up in two days here, so can we wrap things up here? Let's speed it up. <laughs> I'm the mercenary. <laughs> got a lot of knives. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of guns. We all know how it's going to play out. I have a mouth, but I'm not that one. <laughs> I was first. <laughs> well, I'm going to stay green because mm-hmm. I have Green Lantern. And uh, do you remember where we had left off with Green Lantern last month? Um, Did he go back into space or is he still on Earth? He's still on Earth. Oh. And uh, in his fight against an alternate timeline Green Lantern killing version of himself by the name of Parallax, oh, yeah. uh, he went full, spec- full spectrum. Does Parallax have his... Uh, his um, mm, 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 Rosetta Stone of no, Time. No, he does not. He does mm, not. Funny, he left with it. Did he drop <laughs> it's it? It's probably in his pocket. Did he drop That's it a... on the way there? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, Telos continues to cry on that rocky planet somewhere. <laughs> These are tears of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, he went full spectrum. He's a construct himself. And as we all know, you never go full spectrum. No, you don't. You never do that. And uh, he's successful. Tom Clancy at- starts writing here. It's very <laughs> confusing. Uh, he's successful at chasing off Parallax, but his brother finds that Hal has forgotten who he was because he is willpower incarnate. Uh, but he ends up talking him down and going, hey, uh, no, you're actually Hal Jordan. Do I have to, like, bonk you on? How do I bonk light on the head, guys, so that it remembers things? I, I don't know. Anyway, you're Hal Jordan. You're a dude. You're a normal guy. Well, you're not really normal. You're a Green Lantern. You're a space guy. But you're a human being. And he goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he turns back into normal corporeal Hal Jordan. And uh, as soon as he does so, he goes, well, uh, hate to turn into the physical manifestation of a mindset and run. 
But I uh, really should go see my some people about this whole thing. You know, space people. <laughs> he just kind of flies off into space. It's like, okay, bye. See you later, Uncle Hal. His nieces and nephews are all like, well, that was a weird visit. He showed up, terrorist attacked. He beat himself up that had pointy teeth and then turned into a hologram and flew away. I hate it when Uncle Hal comes to visit. <laughs> it's always so weird. Uh, but his space buddies are having troubles of their own because the gray agents who were hired to capture the ahem, renegade Hal Jordan who flew around with a biker jacket saving cats from trees. I still don't understand how the, the universe hates him because he did <laughs> nothing bad whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, they have tracked him down to his spaceship, Darlene. And, he beat uh, up that pink pig alien, like, a year ago. Well, yes, there was that, a year ago. Off, uh, in, off in that secret hidden Green Lantern base that no one that, else saw. That too, yes. Uh, but everyone knows he has long hair. Well, he had long hair and a biker jacket, so he's bad news. That's the bone. Yeah. Uh, so the, the gray agents... Hide your have, daughters. Hell, Jordan's in town. <laughs> Well, you should do that anyway, Well, I honestly. suppose, yeah, you're right, yeah. <laughs> uh, the gray agents who were hired to capture him have tracked him down to the spaceship, and they're taking his friends, uh, Virgo and Trapper, captive. Uh, but lucky for them, Hal Jordan was just on his way to see his space people, and he shows up and is in no mood for their gray antics. And that's where we leave off with him showing up like, Hey, I just went full spectrum, and I'll do it again if you guys don't back off. And everyone's like, Don't go full spectrum. We told you not to do that. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm crazy. I got a whole pile of coconuts above my head that are just going to fall right on it, and I'm going to go bonkers. You want to see nuts? I'll give you nuts. <laughs> coconuts. That's what you'll get. Uh, it's fun. It's it's um it's obviously a, well, we got two issues. Better hurry up and wrap up these things and clear the boards as we, of the storylines we had. There, there's a lot of that this week. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um. The the pre birth stuff as far as the new creative teams at least gave it a instead of having to cram a two issue story in there real quick to clean up their supporting characters uh, things like Superman Detective etc uh, are kind of doing a well let's lay the ground stage and get some of the the status quo in place before rebirth so that we have it and can build off of it there I kind of prefer that style but I don't know how much forewarning a lot of these people were given as far as rebirth where they just went. Um, yeah, you guys should probably wrap that up. You got two issues. Go. I had a 12 issue arc. Nope. You got two. Go. <laughs> so the, this one feels kind of like that where they were just like, hurry up and clean up your shit. Let's go. Let's go. And, and that's what they're doing. Space people. Okay. So, right. so next up. All right. Batman beyond number 11. Kind of falling in the middle of those two things that I just said. Yes. <laughs> Former Red Robin Tim Drake, who, as we all know, is currently living under the guise of Batman Beyond, just got murdered by Big Barda. Whoops. Except he didn't. Oh. Terry McGinnis' little brother yelled out a code to activate the cloaking device in his uh, bat suit, so Big Barda just thought she killed him. Oh, so it was a hologram she stabbed, or... That's how holograms work, right? There were Kirby dots. It was very confusing. In the, in the, in the fog of Kirby dots... Whenever the new gods show up, a lot of mistakes are made. Okay, so, okay. Yes, so um, so Dr. Cuvier uh, implanted chip, or Cavassier, <laughs> yeah, my apologies, I yes. uh, Im- implanted, <laughs> implanted chips to make the Justice League think that everyone is a spider robot, so they're just going to go kill a bunch of people. He then unleashes a Superman Beyond, but Terry's brother goes, Hey! All-powerful Kryptonian who's strangling me right now, you're being mind-controlled. Oh, I am? Huh. huh so he uh i didn't even think that was an option it yeah. was weird how the spider robot kept going gack gack ah, gurgle gurgle yes. <laughs> i didn't think robots did that yeah. but uh now that she said that that makes a lot yeah. more sense yeah. so he rips the chip out of his neck and does the same for the justice league They're like oh well well then batman beyond just the our, lack of spider robots around our, here <laughs> are bad so they capture Kuvi- Kavassier, uh prince tufton the uh tiger man from uh the commandy future is just like, oh, well, um, I am here. You have now connected me to Dr. Cuvier. Uh, I'm just going to go wander up off until that a commandy challenge thing starts. See you guys so later. See you later. <laughs> and they're like, huh, should we follow those animal people who are going to go start a dystopian, like, you know, at wasteland afterlife? It's like, I don't know, maybe. We'll, we'll get to that later. We won't be there, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, the Justice League goes to Gotham. Superman says, hey, 
rioters knock it off <laughs> and they're like oh okay superman our bad so they do and it turns out that superman beyond so is you have a spritz bottle <laughs> he's standing there like hey hey back off <laughs> dinosaur neil what are you doing <laughs> So, and it turns out that a Superman Beyond is a John Kent. So, hey, timing. Ah, timing. That is pretty good. There's some editorial stuff where I'm just like, man, the timing that's to go into the release of when certain things happen. As dorks who are, in one way or another, kind of paying attention to everything that's happening. Sure, sure. Like, man, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, that that was a... You can't a, have John Kent Superman show up until this particular time in this particular issue. Yeah. Yeah. It so, still doesn't make any sense with the Future's End continuity, but Convergence. Convergence. It, it wiped all that clean, yeah. so Future's End technically yeah. never happened, although there are some castaways from that. Although this is technically that. happening, but now because maybe because time is being rewritten, it didn't? I don't know. It, it seems like everyone that bailed out of that Future's End timeline, they're still around, but the, the, the actual timeline, timeline itself is still doesn't readjust, exist. reasserting yeah. itself or something. Yep. And then a guy named Rewire shows up on top of a building, and he's talking to an evil guy, and they cackle maniacally, and they'll... Be a problem, ha, ha, ha. and there'll be a problem for an issue or two, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so that's a big turn. Yes, I, I kind of like Bernard seeing Chang that. is still super awesome at drawing new gods and animal people. <laughs> well, then this is the book for him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so next up, Brian. Yes, it's that time. Mm-hmm. It is that time. the The clock has struck, and it is time for Midnighter because when we last left Midnighter, the Suicide Squad had beaten him unconscious tied him up, shot him off in a rocket ship, and were about to detonate explosives that they had planted inside the rocket ship. And Brian, how can Midnighter get out of this with punching? I'll tell you how. By punching in the digits of his ex-boyfriend, Apollo, and saying, hey, boy, come pick me up for a ride. And Apollo just kind of rolls his eyes and goes, "Ah," and flies (laughs) off and pulls him out of the rocket just before it explodes and whisks him back to his apartment in Opal City. And uh, Midnighter comes to, and the two have actually a very great conversation with one another that brings the emotional backstory that kind of kicked off this whole misadventure to a close, where Midnighter goes, hey, you know, we broke up because I didn't think you would want to live with me living a lie because I've been pretending I knew who I was in my past, and I actually don't. I know nothing about myself. I just know that I'm good at punching things. I'm kind of crappy at everything else in my life. Uh, I thought that was unfair to drag you down into that because I can't know if I'm good enough for you if you don't know who I am. And I don't even know who I am. And uh, so I left and I went and had these zany adventures and I was blatantly honest with everyone I met and told them, I don't know who I am. I'm just, I'm Midnighter. I'm, I'm, I'm just a dude. And it turns out people really like that guy. Yeah. They think he's pretty cool. So, um... There, there's really no reason for me to feel all ashamed about not knowing who I am anymore. And, and, and maybe if we can get back together, what do you, what do you say about that, Apollo? And Apollo's like, well, one step at a time, but we can make out a little bit. Uh, unfortunately for both of them though, Midnighter is working for Spiral now. And if there's one thing Spiral is good at, it is making sure none of their agents actually get busy when they want to, because all of a sudden the phone goes off and they're like, Hey, Quit making out, you two. It's Superman. Like, hey, you guys, stop it. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's uh, Spiral. They call up and say, we need your help because uh, the Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller and Dr. Bendix are about to finish their evil brainwashed Superman clone that they want to work for the government. So we're, we're calling you in, Midnighter. We need you to go stop this. And he looks over to Paul and goes, hey. You, you want to go punch things like we did back in the old days? And Apollo's like, hell yeah, let's go punch some people. So they both show up at Spiral Headquarters, and they're chatting around. They're talking to Helena Bertinelli, and she's filling them in on the whole project that's coming in. When all of a sudden, dimension doors start opening up in the floor of Spiral Headquarters, dropping half the people through. And Midnighter's like, hey, these ain't my dimension doors. I ain't controlling it. Uh, Dr. Bendix took over my neural network of dimension doors, so it's probably him. And Apollo goes diving into the portals to save the people because it turns out he opened the dimension door on the other end over an active volcano. And Midnighter's like, huh, notes. Uh, that seems infinitely more efficient than what I've been doing. Maybe not as satisfactory, yeah, but pretty damn efficient. <laughs> so I'll, I'll save that one for later. 
So Apollo flies off, the doors close, he catches everyone and, and drops them off and s- goes flying back, but it does leave Midnighter all alone to go one-on-one. Well, he's not all alone. Helena Bertinelli's there, but she's fighting off against some of the other people there. Uh, she's actually shooting uh, Captain Boomerang to the wall with the crossbow bolts. But it does leave Midnight- Midnighter for a round two against the guy that whooped his butt last time, Afterthought, the guy that can mm-hmm. see five seconds into the future and know exactly what's about to happen and pick the best route. And uh, Midnighter goes, okay, buddy, let's do this. You and me, one-on-one. And Afterthought just wails into him. I mean, he's throwing punches, throwing punches, kicks, landing every single punch he wants, and Midnighter is not throwing a single punch. And Afterthought's just going, what the hell, man? What are you doing? Throw a punch. And he's just like, nope, just going to keep taking it. And then uh, Afterthought's punching, 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 punching. And Midnighter pulls the old rope of dope because mm-hmm. he goes, yeah, I put extra uh, armor in all the places I allowed you to hit. So uh, I'm absolutely fine. Uh, you can see five seconds into the future, though. Do you like what you see right now? And after that's just on the ground whimpering like, no. <laughs> and then we just get a giant panel of Kurt punch. <laughs> <laughs> And then the next page, we come back to Apollo showing up and him going, hey, good job. You took down your guy and we fed it off the Suicide Squad. Uh, we should probably go stop that whole, uh, they're calling it the Unified, the Superman militant clone that they've, they're they building. Yeah. Looks ultra wild stormy to meet up with <laughs> yeah. these guys. And uh, Amanda Waller and Dr. Bendix have released it on Medora because Medora has done multiple terrorist attacks on the U.S., i.e. at the in the first issue of Midnighter, as well as a Green Lantern, since mm-hmm. they were the ones that blew up the Ferris wheel that injured his niece or nephew. And uh, so they go, okay, well, let's take this Superman unified guy over there and have him just trash the place for vengeance so people understand you can't get away with that stuff anymore. And that's when Apollo and Midnighter show up, and they're like, hey, want to do some punch em ups and, and everyone's just like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Because it's punch em up time. It's good. It's fun. It's always it's good. Midnighter, and fun. Come on. I mean, it's it's so snarky. Uh, we're getting the payoff that that we deserve from an emotional level on the character because he has grown. Mm-hmm. He he infinitely has grown from where he was before coming into Grayson to today, and he is a much different character. He's enjoying his job a lot more, and that may allow him to maybe enjoy his time with Apollo instead of being just gruff dude in the background with a chin spike all the time. <laughs> it's like, hey, get that chin spike out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, Brian, what do you got? All right, I've got Batgirl number 50. Batgirl! Doesn't have a theme song. Well, I know, I just made one right okay, there. Okay, gotcha. It's a very short one. Right. <laughs> so, the Fugue pretended to be Barbara's childhood best friend so he could be her archest of enemies. Uh, as we know, the and rules. Na- and now he's going to do what arch enemies do best, recruit a team of her lesser villains to enact a master plan. Man, this Fugue guy really has studied the rule book. Mm-hmm. So, he's he- got, <laughs> so he's got Corporal Punishment, the Velvet Tiger, the Jawbreakers, on a All probationary right. on a probationary level, Dagger Type. And- <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was a great villain. Um uh, <laughs> And air gun killer moth getting oh! up, get, get, getting the upgrade after dagger type got demoted. It's like man, killer moth is like I showed up in like a one panel flashback and I get to be on on this super villain awesome. team. Awesome, great. Got extra air canisters for this one. <laughs> Actually, he's a little off model, almost as if he was suddenly thrown in here at the last minute. I don't know. Uh, so. They're going to brainwash people to all go to the Burnside Bridge and blow them up and blame it on Barbara Gordon's energy company. But he told Bar- Batgirl... That's a very convoluted plan. He's using mind control and everything, yeah. Uh, but he told he told Barbara his plan, and she undid his mind wipe, so she has now recruited her own team to try to stop them. Spoiler, Bluebird, Operator, you're not going to be Oracle. We've got <laughs> plans for that name. And Black Canary. So Bluebird goes and fights Killer Moth. We know this because there's a giant splash page versus pinup graphic. Yeah, punch a punch. And uh, he has now upgraded from an air gun to a cocoon gun. Oh. So, huh. so dorks like me who are so invested in the new 52 <laughs> Killer Moth can just connect those dots in between all of his appearances and like, oh, he just keeps growing and growing. I'm loving it. <laughs> 
Maybe. It's all unspoken, it's, but you, it's, it's have, all unspoken, you have your but connection with as Killer my Moth. Co- my connection with Killer Moth lets me connect those dots and say, he is having a very rich story across the New 52. Well, after the the, the evil anonymous thing mm-hmm. where he was working with the Harley Quinn, yeah. he, he learned maybe he should embrace the moths. Yeah. Maybe he should just exactly. bring them yeah. in and, and, and make them a part of who he is. Exactly. Now... <laughs> Now all we need is for DC to hire me to write a maxi series where he goes and kidnaps Silky from Starfire. We just we just need the movie. Guys, where's the Killer Moth movie? Yeah, come on guys. You gave it to Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Killer Moth needs a movie now. Yes, yes, exactly. It'll, be, it'll make a fortune. Make a fortune. Mhm. <laughs> <laughs> I but anyway, so anyway, I love I love so Electricity Gun beats Booger Gun and you know frowny face for me, but hey, more of my little Killer Moth yep, Magnum Opus up. in there. Um, uh, then we get spoiler versus the anime motorcycle twins, the jawbreakers, giant splash page graphic, a blue bird shows up to help and they take them out. Corporal punishment versus the operator and a hijacked robot bunny bat suit, giant splash graphic, black canary versus velvet tiger, giant splash graphic. How did they meet the page count on this double size issue? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's a showdown on the bridge that Fugue was going to blow up. Bridge that he's currently standing on right now <laughs> that he's going to blow up. Mardis character in the D's. Oh, oh, no, wait. He sets off an explosion somewhere else in the town. Oh, oh no. Barbara Gordon. <laughs> so Barbara Gordon flies over to the bank that just blew up with uh, with the help of the uh, robot bunny bat suit. Uh, dagger type. Doesn't get a splash page. Frowny face. But he does have a sniper rifle, and he gets taken out very easily. Uh, Fugue was actually setting off a bank heist, which I guess was what he originally, she originally stopped him from doing okay, in gotcha. his actual yep. backstory, not the one that he made up. So, uh, since, since he's been able to take control of her from, with the neural implant that helps her legs in the back, uh, she rips the neural implant out of the back of her neck so he can't control her anymore. Uh, and then her legs don't really work and he shoots her and she bleeds out. Huh. Not really where I thought this was going. But wait. Oh, okay. There's she, more. <laughs> she really used his tech against him and just made him think that he did that to her and wiped his memory of her memories. So now he doesn't know anything about Batgirl. Uh, but she did really mess up her legs doing that, though. Huh. Uh, but luckily, Frankie is able to wet work uh, a new implant in, into her that is unhackable. So you can still walk and jump and run around. So they set up shop at her and Luke's new energy startup, and they put the Batgirl cave in a secret basement that no one else can get to except for her and Operator. All right, fair enough. The end. The what fugue, about Luke? The he can't get down been, there either? I guess not. Well, that's kind of awkward. I mean, he no. was Batwing and all. Well, he doesn't want to be Batwing. I understand that, but you could at least allow him access to the cave. Yeah, I know. It's like it's the like, VIP room. It's not, and, it's not like he like, doesn't know that she... I suppose he could be, you know, part of her, you know... Entourage? Scooby gang or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you want to follow the, the DC TV formula. Hey, I liked, I liked Luke Cage, so, or Luke Cage. Luke Cage I, is I like awesome. Luke Cage as well, but Luke I, Fox. I, yes, I liked Luke Fox yeah. when he was Batwing as well, even though his, his run was a little, uh, ending on a sour note, shall we yes. say? Yes. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> yeah. I still liked his early jet setting adventures, so I, I kind of have a little soft spot for the guy. Feel bad he's getting yes. railroaded so is, out so, of this. So is this the end of the uh, Fletcher Tar era? Uh, pretty close, I think. Or are, are we gonna get like a little fill in? Probably a little rebirth? filler issue. Okay. Or or it might be a uh, a another pre birth setup. Yeah, for the yeah, yeah. Quo type thing. I, I did I, I did see that Fletcher and Tar going off to write a a, a book about anime motorcycle girls at a uh, image. I'm like, well, hey. Well, they already have a uh, template. Yeah. So, like, I'm, just, I'm just like, I'm just like, that's what, that's a thing that they love to do. So, hey, awesome, good yeah. job. If they don't want you to do it in the There's DC a market universe. for it, there's oh yeah, of a exactly market for it. So, shouldn't be an issue. No. Uh, so I guess we'll see where Batgirl goes. I, I just hope it doesn't. It needs to find a line in between where it is now for me, yeah, and where it was with the the grim dark, uh, PTSD. Yeah, Gail grim, grim dark New Fifty Two Batgirl. I was not a fan of. Well, it did have bleak Michael. It did have bleak Michael, yeah, but <laughs> but it was just still a little too bleak, you know. And I, I I loved the new direction, and I don't understand why people were so angry that they were trying to make a comic book that 
young women might want to read. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're vested in that character, we don't want understand. girls in our comic shops. It, it's <laughs> it's that whole. I really want to read this book because I like the character, but it changed into a tone that I don't I suppose. like. And I suppose. And now I'm I'm kind of hung out to dry. And I I can understand it to a point, but I don't understand There's the railing. Other, I guess. Yeah. If if I was if that's me and a, and a book changes tone, I just go, I just go okay, okay. There's I'll like, find something else. There's literally ten thousand other things that mm-hmm. I can read or do right now that will entertain me, and oh. I just shift over to that. <laughs> I'll be actually bringing that up at the end in my oh. little send off stuff. Well, so, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Fair enough. So, uh, so as I said, I'm just hoping it finds a middle ground that keeps both sides somewhat happy. Maybe it, it, it's it'd yeah. be nice for Batgirl to have a. A successful title, and, and yeah. I think it needs to bring the teams together. It needs to yes. be a uniter, not a divider. Well, that works out very well. Yeah. Always. Always. Every mm-hmm. time I've heard someone say that, they're always mm-hmm. a uniter and not a divider. So, yeah. Uh, next up, last book of this episode, Swamp Thing, number four of six, the old school Swamp Thing. This is the going back to the 70s horror style. And where we had left off, Alec Holland is free from the role of Swamp Thing because his best friend, Matt Cable, has... Childhood come- best friend? No, no. Okay. Work buddy. Work buddy. He was the <laughs> Woo. he was the bodyguard cop that was in charge of keeping him safe when he got blown up in that fire and ran into the bayou and turned into Swamp Thing. So he's not a very good guy at his job. He's just, you know... Friends, at the very least. Well, he's felt bad about that because that was his job was to protect Alec Holland, and he spent the whole time finding a way to free Alec from being the Swamp Thing, and he found this magical item from Manda Parbat and went, okay. And a Narba? No. Uh, let's do this, and they went to Zatanna. Zatanna cast a spell, and what it did was turned Matt Cable into Swamp Thing and Alec Holland into normal human Alec Holland. And he's like, huh, well, that's kind of weird. That's not what I thought was going to happen. I... We have to change back. I can't banish Matt into being this. And Matt's like, hey, no, 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 don't worry. I knew this was going to happen. I just, I promised you I would free you from the curse. And I have fulfilled my promise. And I'll just take over the the role of Swamp Thing. You can go have an awesome human life, eat some pancakes, do whatever it is you do. See you later, buddy. That's and- kind of Hellboy's thing. But okay, I guess. <laughs> but then Alec Collins goes, no, I'm not going to leave you high and dry, man. Uh, I have to teach you how to be Swamp Thing. So training montage. Da, 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 da. And they're growing plants and, I don't know, watering things and and, and playing in the bayou and, and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's a nice day. It's pretty good. Uh, but when they're about to wrap up their training... Both of them hear a gunshot off in the distance. They go, let's go investigate. And they run over to find a poacher (gasps) who has shot a deer. And Matt goes, don't worry. As Swamp Thing, I will take care of this. He comes over and he goes, hey, poacher, you cannot do that here. And the poacher goes, sweet Jesus, a swamp monster, and shoots it right in the chest. And Matt Cable goes, hey, hey, (laughs) and then tears the poacher into 10,000 little pieces using his branches and limbs flying and blood all over the place and then turns around and goes, Swamp Thing has won the day! And Alec Holland is like, <laughs> Matt! <laughs> that is a little bit of an overkill. That is what we would call a gross overuse of power in this situation. And Matt Cable goes, ha, ha, guess I don't know my own strength. My bad. And, and Alec Holland actually goes, well, don't let it happen again. Let's head on home. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, they go to head on home, but then Matt Cable Swamp, they goes, no, I have a better idea. Let's head into town. So he does his swamp strut straight into the middle of town, and all the people are like, ah, swamp monster. It's a horrible swamp monster. And Alex going, Dude, this is a really bad idea. Like, even when I was Swamp Thing, I never just walked right into a town. I taught you how to, like, infiltrate into these cities. It's not a great idea. So the cops show up, and they're like, freeze, stop where you are. And uh, Matt Cable's Swamp Thing murders the crap out of them. And Alex like, I'm starting to get the feeling that your reasons for taking over a Swamp Thing were not entirely altruistic. You know what this is? Tumblr is not going to stand for this whatsoever. This is horticultural appropriation right here. Yep. You have taken my swamp body and you are doing bad things with it and making Swamp Thing a bad name. 
And uh, Swap Thing just kind of goes, yeah, whatever, Alec Holland. You're really annoying. I was trying to make you go away for the last week, but you kept screaming training montage and hanging about. It's really been annoying. So he kind of wraps him up in vines. And that's when the true hero of this Swamp City comes running up. Bayou Billy with the final grenade from his one-man fight (laughs) against the narcotic (laughs) smugglers of the bayou. Runs up and is like, take this swamp thing, and throws the grenade that does nothing to Matt Cable's swamp thing. Just blows a hole, and then it grows right back. And uh, a swamp thing, Matt Cable swamp thing goes, okay, Billy, uh, Bayou Billy, I played your game. It was shit. I hated it. I hated your game. I could barely make it past the second level. What was the deal with punching and kicking and jump kicking? It, it didn't work. It didn't work whatsoever. And he causes all of the plant microorganisms in his body to sprout at once, uh, flaying him from the inside and shredding his internal organs to fall out of his mouth. And uh, even Captain N couldn't beat your game. <laughs> this is what you get. That's what you get by you, Billy. That's what you get. Uh, common linkage, though. Apparently, there was a comic in the late 80s drawn by Amanda Connor huh. for Bayou Billy. I did that when I was looking for the theme song because I was going to play it here, but I was, you know, I was like, there was a comic for this? And Amanda Connor drew it? Holy crap. When was this? Uh, 88, 89, around there, to answer my own question. Uh, so Alec Holland goes, no, you're a horrible person. You've killed the hero of the bayou and, uh, breaks free from the vines and goes to charge him. But, Matt Cable Swamp Thing opens up the earth and swallows him up into it and then turns around building a, cr- a, a throne of thorns and uh, goes, bring me the television audience so that I can make my new kingdom for I will be the swamp king of the world. Yeah, that should work. That'll work out fine. And that's where we leave off. So, uh, Swamp Thing. That's really proto Amanda Connor, but I can see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just had to say, this was, for all of the 70s old school style, there was a lot of tongue-in-cheekedness in this as well, where it was kind of a, um, okay, well, we have only so long to get this story told, so I'm just going to let this slide. <laughs> it's like, really? You're just going to let straight murder slide? All right, I guess uh, if that's your thing. <laughs> yep. But that's it. That's all of our books for this week. Yeah. I feel like we've grown, Brian. We've learned. We've, we've, we've expanded our horizons for the week. Uh, reminder to you guys though, expand your own horizons. Go out there and buy these books. Try some of them out. Try something new. I understand we're at the very, very end, but some of these are prologues leading into rebirth. We tried to at least mention which ones those were so that you understand. Uh, those are not closing storylines. Those are the beginnings of storylines. So feel free to hop on those. Uh, but. If you don't want to buy the last chapter or two of an entire storyline run before the reset, not reset, before the the new storylines kick off, understandable. I can get that. But there's plenty of other things you can go out there and buy. I guess that's a good segue for you and what your end of show yeah, thing is. Well, you know, because, hey, hey, everybody. Oh, you turn I'm, your I'm chair around again? Chair around. Jeez, man, that's two straight talks in one episode. Hey, everybody. Are you a fan of the Rebirth creative teams but are having trouble getting excited by 40 Batman and Superman titles? Well, has DC got something for you? Oh, that's your thing. Okay. Because they just announced an in-continuity Vertigo-style imprint run by Gerard Way of Umbrella Academy and My Chemical Romance fame. Odd. Yes, no, noted Grant Morrison mentee Gerard Way. Yeah, I, I have read something about that before. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, he, he, I guess. I heard he's also not okay. Well. He, he did sing a song that. About is that is true. <laughs> he went and joined a parade. Yep. Uh, something yeah. about Grant Elena. Morrison, Grant Morrison um. chased after him with some scarecrow robots. It was a thing. It was it's, a whole it's thing. Just, you know, a phase. <laughs> yes. Yes, that that is Grant Morrison as the bald supervillain in all the Danger Days music videos. I've never seen that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. It's probably because he wasn't speaking in his very rough Scottish very accent. Very true. Yeah, <laughs> just grimacing menacingly while they shoot <laughs> Nintendo zappers at him. Uh, so there's going to be a couple extra books that will supposedly be in continuity, a little bit more mature reader style, but not necessarily just just weird. 
Yeah, it's just pretty much. I, hey, I everyone, this mature... is going to be the, this is going to be the weird stuff. There's so, there are some that are labeled specifically as mature, but some of them are just this is going to be weird, guys. Yeah, just so you know, if you enjoyed the artisanal uh, DCU weirdness, this is where we're going to be able to get it. Still, how did like, you feel about Dial H? If you answered positively, come check out this come imprint. Check, <laughs> come check out the young. Come check out the young animal imprint. So we're going to get uh, Doom Patrol by uh, Gerard Way and Nick Darrington. Uh, I love the fact he's like, this is going to be really weird. <laughs> this like, is just, touch your own button and it explodes weird? Or is I guess that it's going to be weird. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pay tribute not only to Grant Morrison's run on the series, but the entire history of Doom Patrol. Ah. So it looks like someone has wrested that away from... Uh, Jeff Johns, you're not getting around to this. If you want to hold on to Shazam, cool, but we got to give someone Doom Patrol <laughs> and the artwork. People on have it. been clamoring for Doom Patrol for a long time yeah. since the new Fifty Two came and out. I haven't really seen anyone that really seems to have a good idea of what to do with it. I, after reading Umbrella Academy, I could totally see him doing a good Doom Patrol. So yeah. I'm excited for this. It's gonna be something called Challengers Sh- of the Unknown coming back too. Something very similar. Oh is. man! So we got Shade the Changing Girl. Oh, uh, by C- by Cecil Cachalucci and Marley Zarcone. That was a, a character that intrigued me back at the very beginning of the New 52 when he was on Justice League Dark. He was the guy that can manipulate reality and kept making girlfriends for himself. Yeah, there's there's a lot of like vert- there's like some vertigo shade stuff that's supposed to be very good that I've never gotten around to, but it's a it's a uh, Gerard Way is describing it as another alien, a woman alien, who's hiding in the body of a teenage girl who used to be a bully, and uh, she has the madness vest on, and the madness is taking over, and we'll see what that could possibly be. I'm sure pleasant trees. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. I guess the idea of like having to, uh, I don't know, live with someone else's life that came before you, it's like, oh, this person's already being treated horribly, and I'm trying to take over her life. Whoops. And I'm insane. I yes, am literally I'm insane. insane. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and getting more insane every day. <laughs> yes. A new character called a Mother Panic, uh, written by Jody Hauser with art by Tommy Lee Edwards. Okay, that's uh, new. Uh, J- oh, uh, he's no Tommy Lee Edwards doing the covers. Jean Paul Leon is doing the interiors. Uh, this one is actually set in Gotham City uh, with a brand new character. And uh, Jim, uh, I love the fact that during the uh, press conference, or Jim Lee leaned in very specifically and said. This is going to be the mature readers title. <laughs> Just so you know, everybody, don't get mad at me later. <laughs> it will be polybagged. <laughs> yes. And finally, saving the best for last, a book named Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye. <laughs> it's so beautiful. They should have sent a poet or at the very least a musician. Oh, wait, they did. Um, (laughs) Written by Gerard Way and John Rivera with art by Michael Avon Oming. Ah. It looks very like indie book. It's great. And it's just, it's just Cave Carson in his flan, in his flannels um, (laughs) running across the title. I'm just like, Oh man, why do I want to read this book so bad? Because it's a, it's, Cave Carson is like a 60s era a sci-fi spelunking character. <laughs> yep, that's it. I'm just like what? action spelunking, and not he, just regular spelunking. Yep. It's like guess what? He's got a cybernetic eye and I am so excited for this book. I can't even tell you. <laughs> I love how they just didn't bury the lead on it. They're just like, hey, uh, Kip Carson, he's got a cybernetic guy. <laughs> yeah. Just so all of our, That's what this story's gonna be just about, so just all so of know. our cards are on the table. He's got a cybernetic guy, everybody. I don't know if that's gonna make you want to read this or not, mm. but I just thought it'd be more fair if we were upfront about it. <laughs> so in between this con announcement and uh the gigantic two page spread uh ad spread for uh future quest. Yep. I'm pretty excited about things that are coming up from DC Comics. I'm just happy that it's... Uh, and I understand. I completely understand why they're playing it a bit more safe with this uh, with the Rebirth launch. Because mm-hmm. uh, they got burned. They yeah. got burned bad. They went, hey, we're going to do it. What you guys are all clamoring for. We're going to do some indie style. We're going to break off. Do Let the creative teams have full control. Just go. Do their own thing. And sales were not impressive. They were not impressive at all. So... So we have called in someone with a very large pre-existing fan base <laughs> and said, I, hey, I maybe well, you want to try this? <laughs> to be fair, they're, they're off out of the scene people that they've brought in mm-hmm. as far as uh, American Alien, Superman American yeah. Alien, I mean, uh, Max Landis. He did a really good job with mm-hmm. that book. Yeah. So uh, maybe maybe they'll find something. Maybe they'll 
they'll get something going there where people can just pop in for an arc or whatever and do what they want to do, a mm-hmm. maxi series or whatever, and and get that itch scratch that they wanted yeah. to do as far as telling a story with a childhood character they loved, like Cave, Cave Carson. Carson, who has a cybernetic <laughs> eye. I understand. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, they've spent their entire life going, I have the ultimate Cave Carson. That's all you have to do, Brian. Yeah. You have to start a band. Uh, get famous, and then you can write your uh, your. Then uh, I can write my fast forward series or my Aztec series. Your yeah. Aztec series, <laughs> yeah, that you've been clamoring about for years. <laughs> Manhattan Guardian, come on, <laughs> there you go. You have yeah. a route now. You have a plan. Put it into action. We've got enough fans from this uh, podcast to get our own imprint at DC, right? Uh no. Okay. No. No. Not, no. Not, not no, at all. No. Because no. a there's a reason between listening because we're the only gig that actually gives the plot lines for all yeah, the books yeah. mm-hmm. and actually enjoying what we have to say. Oh yeah. Those are two very mm, different things. Yeah. So it's huh. it's a Stockholm syndrome for a bunch of people. I can yeah. tell you that much. Oh yeah. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, make sure you support stuff you like with the rebirth titles because. Yeah, they're playing it safe with a bunch of them, but those are subsidizing these imprints like the the what is it the uh, young, young animal, young, young animal, and the weird Hanna Bar and whatever the heck they're calling this weird Hanna Barbera line. They're yeah, doing. I don't even know what they're calling it, yeah. but all of these off kilter weird things that are kind of the we're just letting people tell stories they want to tell are over in these side mm-hmm. books over here, and and I have a feeling it will be pretty safe. The movies are out now, and they're going to start coming out in their six month paces, so they're going to have to start kowtowing to that i don't think as much as people are worried about but i think it will be safe 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 for a little bit and if you want to indoctrinate your child to the future quest comic like i did you just pull up the youtube video of the 90s johnny quest theme song the uh half animated half computer animated one the real adventures of johnny quest which is the most uh epic sounding of johnny quest theme songs you hit play and then you show your child that double page spread that was in the back of all the comics you say, hey, doesn't this seem awesome? I made mine watch Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. That's a little different. He doesn't seem that enthused no. for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Hey-o>. Mind taking. <laughs> Woo! Still uh, can't do it. <laughs> uh, so we do have one other announcement before we go into the whole closing ceremonies of this episode. Uh, that concerns the month of May. The very merry month of May? The very merry month of May. Hmm. We will be on hiatus for the month of May, oh. and, and I know that makes some people sad. Some people probably happy, even. Yeah. Uh, Beth and I are taking our belated uh, honeymoon, uh, Luna de Miele, as they say in, in Italy, Italia. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But we're leaving for a month. We're going to travel around Europe and uh, beat bums. And strangely enough, not going to Britain. You would think that would be uh, one of the first places we go, but I've had enough Britain Due to Brian. Oh, man. Over the last couple it's of all my fault. Sorry, Britain. <laughs> no, it, it's just because we're going in at the beginning of May, so we're going to start down and do the whole South Mediterranean and then stick around the Riviera for a month or so. and Ride a Vespa around uh, cobblestone streets. Oh, yes. That's, yeah. you know, yeah. As we do. As you do. As we do. Uh, so I am returning back to Italy for a while and, and hanging out there, and then um, we'll be back. So basically, it looks like the last episode before that is going to be on May 1st. That will cover that last week of April, and then we will end up coming back on June 5th, just in time for Rebirth. Anything that comes out Rebirth style, we will, of course, back cover. We're not going to just all of a sudden jump into it and go, hey, good luck, guys. Have fun. Uh, but it does. It will give you guys the motivation that if you want to know how these stories end, you have to go buy the issue mm-hmm, now. Yeah. 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 Take that. First, it's free, <laughs> but after that. <laughs> is DC financing your honeymoon? <laughs> no, no, no. I should have thought of that. Then. Oh, yeah, man. That would have made a lot more sense. Huh. But uh, I am taking a little Lego Batman around so I can play where in, the, where in Italy is Lego Batman and oh, people nice. can guess. So. You have one of the smiling Lego movie Batmans? No, I'm getting one with the grapple gun so that he can climb any monument I want. Blended. Yes. The usual. Maybe I'll give away trades for it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll put him places and make it very, he's climbing a cup of coffee on a table. What city is he in? <laughs> <laughs> ah, now I get to save my pocketbook and not have to buy books. <laughs> <clears throat> Curses, someone caught the reflection of something else off of the coffee and, and it made him know. Now I have to give them a copy of Ravagers or something. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I can give him some chase catch cards or something you can plant around for our international listeners who have no clue who I am. Well, no, no. <laughs> 
But, uh, yeah, next week we will go back into it, get some more books done. Uh, if they do want to contact us, though, yell at me for leaving for a month. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, where can they do so, Brian? Uh, the internet. Yes. It's, it's out there. It's a thing that people use to communicate. Uh, we're DCR Podcast everywhere. We don't really care if you like us. Uh, we don't need uh, follows. Uh, we're not selling you anything. Like, add the comments in the below. Do you agree with us on Young Animal? Let us know in the comments. Let your voice be heard. Become part of the conversation at DCR Podcast. Or if you want to just yell at me for going on honeymoon. So, <laughs> you can uh, do that too, yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, again, we're not selling you anything. We don't really care about that. We just give you that so you know how to find us and yell at us. Uh, that being said... Brian, you got anything else before we bounce? No, I already did my stuff. Okay, just asking. So, oh, uh, you know what? I, 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 read, I read. Son of a bitch. We were going to hit an hour and a half on the nose, and you, you ruined it. <laughs> I read Apocalyptic Girl by Andrew McLean. It was really good. Yeah? Yeah. You enjoyed it? You liked I it a lot? It, yeah. I, I have finished Witcher 3 and have moved on to Metal Gear Solid 5. Okay. Uh, change of pace, because Witcher 3, I was very much just waving my sword at anything that looked at me cra- the wrong way. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, uh, much more stealthy. Boo, Apparently still. just Boo. running in and just going, ah, firing guns. It doesn't work out as well. Huh. does not work out as well. Just FYI. That's my uh, pro tip. <laughs> uh, so, everyone, enjoy your books, enjoy your week, enjoy your lives, and we're going to talk to you next week. Bye.